everyone! So today I'm doing a video that has been really highly requested and I have been putting it off because in my opinion I was thinking, okay, how to start a YouTube channel? Well, just start a YouTube channel. I tell this to people all the time. They're like, Trisha, oh my gosh, how did you do it? How did you get started? You, anyone can have a channel. You just start a channel on YouTube and start making videos. But I get what the, now that I'm kind of looking at it in like retrospect, I get like the main questions you're asking. Like, how, how do you get started? How do you get views? How do you make a video? How do you think of a video? To me, and now it just seems like second nature, or I'm just like, anybody should do it. It's like eating food. But I, I understand. And so I kind of made a little, like a little note, a little list of things. That, they're just very little things that my tips maybe to getting started on YouTube. Um, and everything's different for everybody, but this is just what's worked for me personally and how I've gained a following, you know, and why I think my videos are semi-successful. Um, I have a really bad habit of putting myself down. I do this a lot where it's like, oh, nobody really watches my video, nobody cares, and I have to like give myself acknowledgement. I know I say I'm narcissistic a lot, but a lot of times I don't acknowledge like stuff that I've done, and I do think my YouTube channel has grown pretty awesomely, and um, I, you know, I have to pat myself on the back for that sometimes, and so I don't mean that narcissistic, but it is cool that people watch, and t trust me, I do not take anyone for any sing not one of you, not one viewer for granted. I really don't because I realize now how hard it is for people to get views and everyone's trying to, you know, get out there and stuff on YouTube and um, I, I, for what I am right now and people viewing me, I'm so appreciative and you guys, I, I did this for five years just purely as a hobby with almost no views. So I, I love it and whether you guys continue to watch me or stop watching me, I'm still going to love it. It's just really fun. And I think that's the number one tip I want to give you guys is do something you love. Don't start a beauty channel if you don't love doing makeup tutorials or, you know, don't do makeup tutorials if you don't love it because it's going to show. Me personally, I, I don't mind doing makeup tutorials. I don't love it. Um, and lately, I used to love doing hauls and I don't love it anymore, so I'm kind of stopping with that meaning. Even if, do something you love at the moment because I used to love hauling and I don't love it anymore. So I kind of stopped and kind of like, oh, because to me it felt like, a, like a job, like something I had to do rather than something I want to do. So same thing with you. Do what you really want to do. I love talking. I think that's like my niche here personally on YouTube is just talking. I love telling you guys stories. I love telling stories in my real life so it's kind of fun to talk to you guys um, you know, and tell you guys stories of my life because I, I love to talk. I'm a talker. I will talk about anything to anyone so I just like to talk about my my day-to-day -day life, my um, you know, funny stories I think I experience or rants or just getting things off my chest. I just like to talk things out. So I consider my channel to be a very like personality based channel which I just talk and hopefully you guys like what I say and some of you don't and that's okay too. Um, so that's what I love doing at the moment. Now it could change. I, when I first started I solely did videos for Quentin Tarantino. I would reenact Quentin Tarantino movies. Go back to videos literally from, if you just type in like Grindhouse Barbie I'm sure there'll be a million that comes up or Quentin Tarantino and Trisha Paytas. There'll be a million that come up. I did so many just dedicated to him because I was on MySpace at the time and I really, really wanted him to notice me and it ended up working. Um, the director, Eli Roth, was on MySpace and saw all my videos and like my crazy dedication towards Quentin Tarantino and actually arranged for me to like meet him at, um, at a movie theater in LA that he was like doing this like, fe like festival thing. It was really, really cool and I actually got to meet Quentin Tarantino that way. But it was like a passion and I loved it and that's why I did it. So things have obviously changed. I don't do videos <laughs> just for Quentin Tarantino anymore. I do videos. I started to do beauty videos because everyone asked for them but honestly I was getting a lot of hate and I didn't even really love doing them. I love to do hair and makeup. I don't think I'm like a teacher for it though. I don't think I should be like, oh guys, this is how you should do your hair and makeup because like it just, mine's always off the wall. Um, I do like to do outfit of the days occasionally, but to me they're hard to film because I just film kind of by myself. I like the simplicity of just sitting down and filming. Um, now on that note, the simplicity of filming. So I always recommend to just have natural lighting. People are like, I need lighting. What kind of lighting should I have? And I have the lighting systems and the lamps and the bulbs and the soft boxes and the umbrellas. Um, but honestly, I think natural lighting is the best. It's what I film and I sit in front of a huge window and make sure you're sitting in front of the window and not your back towards the window, otherwise you'll be backlit. Um, but just sit in front of a huge window and I think honestly it gives me like the best lighting. It's my favorite lighting so I like to try and film during the day and if you have a job, try and film on your day off if, if you really want to do this, you know. Because um, I, had, I had a real job. Honestly, it was a nighttime job so I could film during the day but... I love doing it. Um, so just do that. And as far as camera going, now a lot of people are like, oh, you can just film off your MacBook. I personally don't know how to uh, do that. Um, what I used to do is film on my iPhone. My mom still does that as well. It works just great. I don't really know how to edit on your iPhone. I think you can do it, but my mom does what I used to do. <laughs> Literally just uploads. I just like record, 
stop, upload, like no editing involved. And I think that works great if you're just starting out. But a lot of people ask the cameras I do use. I'm using right now the Canon Rebel T3i. Um, I've had this literally for seven years and it has held up. I love it. I always say like there's problems with it, but it's usually the SD card because I was like pulling it in and out. And now I just like hook a USB to upload my videos and I just upload them to my movie and I edit on iMovie, which um, my friend Shauna taught me how to use iMovie, but there are tutorials out there on how to use it. And once you do learn how to use it, it maybe takes a half hour. Once you do know, it's literally like the easiest thing in the world. I don't even mess with Final Cut Pro. I like to keep things simple. Um, uh, I'm just a simple kind of person. And same thing with my vlogging. I use the Canon Vixia Mini when I vlog. It's a wide angle lens. Not everyone loves that. I used to have a Canon power shot um, which does not have the wide angle but I love the Canon Vixia Mini um, and again I just edit those in iMovie as well and that's more vlogging if you want to do follow me around videos that's really easy just get a little camera and just film everything yes you can do <laughs> and I love them honestly those are my favorite videos to watch right now on YouTube is the vlogging um, and if you guys want to check out my vlogs I have a second channel youtube.com slash Tisha's Life so net promotion getting yourself out there and known I personally <sighs> built my channel mostly myself. I will say in the past um, four or five months doing collabs with people have definitely helped my channel a lot, but I built myself up to about 500, about, I'm trying to think of like before I started collabing with like Lisa and Shane, I think it was at like a half a million, 600,000 subscribers, which is a pretty good solid foundation for fan base and fan base. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think it was a, a pretty good build on my own and I will say um, to my credit, I think that's a good thing to kind of build on your own. A lot of people I know want to collab with people, and I'm not going to lie, that does help. And I've helped build other people's channels up that way. Um, but sadly, those people's channels don't really grow. I won't say they don't grow. It's harder for them to grow because then you're kind of associated with that person that helped you grow, if, that, if, that, if you know what I mean. I know a few friends that have gotten help from big YouTubers that have, you know, and then kind of when they don't have them in videos, people complain. They're like, where's this person? Um, same thing with me with people I've helped build up literally from like 10,000 squares to 150 or zero to 60, whatever it is um, that I've helped build up. A lot of times they, they get mad if I don't want to like do videos with them anymore because people are always asking, where's Trish? Or, you know what I mean? So, in, I personally would say really just do what you love and try and find a community to post those and don't be obnoxious and leave obnoxious comments like, come see my videos. I would say, you know, use now you have Twitter, so use hashtags that relate to what you're doing. Um, you know, for me, when I first started, I would post on a Quentin Tarantino forum board and a lot of my videos would get views that way. Um, and then what I did is I started doing the fast talking thing and with that I would start posting them on like talk show forums like I remember I posted on the Ellen forum I posted it on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno forum I posted it on David Letterman's I would try and post everywhere to be like hey put this girl on your show like random like I don't even know what I was thinking like if that would work and it kind of did work Ellen ended up seeing my video I was on there. I was on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Um, obviously, I got calls then from that from Guinness World Records. Um, and I kind of just did that by pushing the tags, like, oh, world's fastest reader, which Guinness then saw and kind of called me. <coughs> Woo! I just sneezed out a lung. Um, <laughs> so I would do that, or if you have a special talent, maybe put special talent in the title. Or if you're wanting, wanting America's Got Talent to see you, put that in the title. Like, whatever, if you have, like, a show that you want to see you, or if you want to be on, like, Hoarders or My Strange Addiction, like, for instance, I did videos about tanning, and I put, like, my tanning addiction, and at the time, My Strange Addiction was not around. But I was on the pilot episode of that because they saw my, t my video title. So make sure you really put what you want portrayed in your video out there. Now I know with my vlogs and stuff I can just say one line in the video that's my title because it's, it's intriguing because it's a vlog but if it's something I really want someone to see I will put their name in the title or the show in the title or um, you know whatever you think will grab the attention. I'm gonna sneeze again. <coughs> Woo! Oh, bless me. Now I will say collabs definitely do help. I, I They'll help build up your channel. And I'm not saying everybody's going to be pigeonholed where you're just stuck with that person who helped build you up. Um, it's your job then, if you're collabing, to kind of take it and keep people entertained. And you can't blame people for not liking your content or not watching. I see so many YouTubers now, this one girl in particular, I'm not going to say her name, but she just revamped her entire channel and has all these new hosts on there and spent lots and lots of money to make hers like high quality videos. And people are really upset with her and then she gets really defensive like saying, you guys are stupid, you don't know, this is the direction of YouTube. Blah, blah, blah. It's like if people don't like your content, they're not wrong. You know, you rely on your viewers. As a YouTube, you rely on your viewers. I don't like calling people fans. I know a lot of people will say, like, I'm your biggest fan. And it's very sweet, but you have to be really humble too when on YouTube. I think people get big heads on YouTube, like thinking YouTube is like television. It's it is a form of media, but you're not like you're not doing anything that not anyone everyone else can't do. You know what I mean? Anyone can start a YouTube channel, not anyone can go be on an ABC NBC sitcom 
or ABC sitcom. Um, YouTube anyone can do so you have to be humble at that too and don't think like you're so much better than your viewers or all that stuff. Um, I just you know I think the reason YouTube is so popular is because we're YouTubers are more relatable. People who YouTube are regular people and I think that's kind of the appeal of YouTube and that's kind of why I just kind of keep my videos simple still because I want you guys to feel like we are friends because you guys know I don't have that many friends. I have friends now thank God but only a handful of them and I want you to feel like you know we can talk to each other. I like the intimacy of this. Now people do do like grand sketch comedy and music videos so if that's what you're doing great but if, if for me like I said I'm more personality based where I want that more intimate feel and I think if you're going to do it that route to be make sure you're just humble and um, you can totally clap. I don't clap as much with people anymore um, just like friends but just like random people I used to help that would like that used to contact me and be like, oh, Tasha, I really, really like your videos. Can we collab? And I would try and help them. But honestly, it just ends up backstabbing you in the end. Because once you stop doing, once you stop, once you can't do videos with them anymore or you don't have interest in doing that because it just gets tired, it just gets worn out, then they get mad at you. Or real life friends that found you. I had a friend who found me through my YouTube channel and she wanted to collab. And we never could hang out without filming. And to me, that was, that was bad too. So sometimes you get people that use you. But collabing works. It does for sure. People that do collab do really well but um i i don't i wouldn't recommend that until later on in youtube i don't know that's just my personal opinion i don't know you just gotta do whatever works i again i sometimes i will collab with people just because i like their videos um but oh and that's i guess i have to bring that up like you know um shane dawson obviously really helped my channel a lot when we collab that definitely did and his uh girlfriend lisa and shauna and i mean I, all those people i collabed with they all had more subscribers than me at the time and they definitely helped so i can't you know neglect that and be like oh collabs are stupid and they don't help they definitely help your channel um and it's great because you get more people to see you but like i said then it's then when you get those people from them they're like oh i found you through lisa i found you through shane i found you through shauna wherever they found me through um you have to stay and keep keep the entertainment going and not just rely on those people like I would never be like we have to collab every single video like I had a friend that did this who was like really mad when I didn't want to collab anymore it's not that I didn't like her it's just like I don't like to do the same kind of video over and over and over again if that makes sense um so um that's that okay so I guess then the final thing is just don't read comments when you're first starting out I will say I have been <sighs> there has been times that I really really wanted to quit YouTube after reading comments it's so it can be so hurtful, especially as a teenager. I think about this and I talk about this sometimes with people my age. Um, if I had YouTube in high school, I don't know if I would have made it because it is harsh. It is harsh. I had a pretty tough bullying time throughout high school. I switched high schools like four or five times due to bullying. Um, and it was definitely hard and tough. But YouTube is brutal compared to that. And I was thinking if I would have gotten these comments when I was in high school, when I was already going through a difficult time at school... I don't know what would have happened to me. I would have like deteriorated. And if you are a young person starting YouTube, I would just highly recommend to not read comments. I, I would say disable comments, but comments, you know, getting comments help your video because people will see people commenting on it and it does help your video. But honestly, if it's too cruel, disable the comments. If you just want to put out content right now, just disable the comments. Um, I'm going to be honest. I start reading my comments for the first hour and then once they start getting really nasty, I stop reading them and that's what it's sad to me because I love and I and I do respond like the first hour and then they get nasty and then I stop. Um just for my own well-being. That's kind of why I like Twitter and I feel like that's the best way to reach me because Twitter for the most part is my genuine like they they actually love me. They don't just watch me to hate on me. They genuinely love me and so I I respond to people mostly on Twitter. Instagram is very brutal too. Social media in general. It's really, really brutal. And all I can say is don't really read the comments or take the comments with a grain of salt and just think about who it is that's saying these comments. Probably people who don't feel very good about themselves because people who feel good about themselves and love their lives, um, they don't bring people down. <laughs> they just don't. I know people who are so content and happy with their lives and they don't bring people down. And when I was like not happy with myself, I would be that hater. I would be the person that like, she's so ugly, she's so fat, she's so gross. And meanwhile, that's just my own insecurities coming out. So I know both sides of it. Um, so try not to read comments or gossip forum boards. I, I read the gossip boards. I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment at this point. Um, and I try really hard to stop because it can be, you really want to know what people say, but sometimes you just, you're better off not knowing what people say. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm much older than probably most of you. Well, not, I mean, 
I know I have like older people watching, but a lot of you are very young and I'm much older than most of you. So I can kind of take it because I have been through the ringer and back with as far as my self esteem. And when you grow up, you just learn to not really care what anyone thinks about you. That just comes with time and age. I know it's really easy to say that at 18, like, I don't care what anyone says. Or in, in high school, 15, I don't care what anyone says. Like, at that age, you do just because you're immature. You just do. Um, and then you get older. And with each year, I can honestly say you just start to give less. Cares, you know, you just don't really care anymore. You're just like, okay, so this person thinks I'm fat, whatever. Like, that means literally nothing to me. It literally doesn't. And while words hurt, it doesn't, it doesn't like seep and like sit with me for days. And I'm like, oh my god, this person thinks I'm fat. Like, ah, uh, like, you know, it, that stuff just doesn't matter anymore. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but I would not read the comments if you're not thinking you're going to handle it. And people are mean. People are mean. They just are. You could be the prettiest girl in the whole world, and I'm sure people would still be like, this bitch is ugly. And that's just what YouTube is. They're just, there's some haters. But I will say, with haters comes lots of love. And that is the best part about YouTube, is the love. I have met amazing friends in real life because of YouTube. Not just YouTubers, but people who just watch my videos, who have come to meetups. And we have connected on a whole other level. And people who follow me on Twitter, I've never met before. And they don't make videos. And we just talk. And I feel like they really know me. And they always have my back. And that is a really, really cool feeling. My Twitter fam, a special shout out to the Twitter fam. You guys are... I like my heart because when things get rough or, you know, if someone makes fun of me or if someone's talking trash about me or if I'm feeling low, you guys always bring me up. Like, always. It is it is crazy. On Twitter anymore, I maybe get, like, one hate comment. I will block hate comments, no problem on there. But I maybe get, like, one hate comment a day, which is nothing compared to hundreds of tweets I get full of love and I just read all of them and I try and respond to all of them and I see them all and I think lately I've been just saying I love you guys so much because it is such an overwhelming amount of love and support that you can get here on YouTube and I watch channels who have like a th like literally like 900 subscribers or a thousand subscribers and they have their own little community everyone kind of builds their own little family and it's a really beautiful thing and people start investing um, interest in other people's lives and I think that's a really great thing and rooting for other people and I think in that sense it brings together a lot of people and um you can do great things with YouTube. Uh, I'm very, very proud now to call um, my uh, Shane, my friend, and Lisa, my friend, and Shauna, and they're all doing really great things. Shane just made a movie, directed it. He has his own reality show coming out on Stars about it. Uh, Lisa's in it. Shauna's pitching TV shows. I mean, just there's so much inspiration, and people are doing so many things. Um, you know, my friend Kate's doing going to a makeup school right now, like a really prestigious one, and. You see these people do big things. You see Jenna Marbles and all them, but there's also a lot of like little, littler YouTubes, YouTubers that I see things. I see them, you know, get to work with Maybelline or get to work, you know, it's really awesome. Um, so, I don't know, that was my sister. Um, and, you know, my sister and my mom, they both have smaller channels and they get really amazing opportunities as well. And you just, it can open up a whole world of opportunities. But again, don't be in it for the opportunities or anything like that. Be in it because you truly love making videos. Because if you're doing it just to try and get, you know, get, be like, I want, I see this person getting to work with L'Oreal, I want to work with L'Oreal. It sometimes it just won't happen. To be honest, I was always a little better. I would see girls. And, I, and they would get these really great opportunities with big companies like Target and stuff. I'm like, why can't I get it? But it's because I'm vulgar and I'm crass. And I say things that are not PC. And I say things that are not brand friendly. And that's okay because that's what I like to do. And I, you know, as long as you like to do what you like to do, it's great. And you know what? I do get opportunities even though I'm crass and vulgar and sexual. You know, I got to be a host on Game Show Network, Sexpert, Door 3 channel. Um... So you, you just have to find your own niche and then whatever fits you will come. And if nothing comes to you, then at least you have an audience and I think that's the best part of it all. Is I have a captivating audience that I can do whatever the fuck I want. So <laughs> anyways, I love you guys. Seriously so much. I know this was kind of long winded, but I hope it helped you and encouraged you if you are trying to start YouTube. And honestly, YouTube has changed my life. I said this a million times. It's changed my life career-wise, professionally, friend-wise, personal my personal life. It's just, it's literally life changing for me. So I really encourage everyone to do it. Like I said, I got my mom started on YouTube, my sister. I'm just, I'm like, start YouTube, my friends. I have a couple friends that are on YouTube with, you know, a couple thousand subscribers and it's great. It's just fun. And whether you have two subscribers or 200,000 subscribers, YouTube is a community and you will find your own community within your channel. They will come. Trust me. I find the most random people sometimes when I'm searching. I had a girl tell me she like was searching some celebrity name and found my videos and now she's like obsessed with me and I thought that was like the coolest thing ever because I do the same thing. I would like, 
like Google like an interview and then I find someone else talking about it and I'm like, oh, this girl's interesting. Who is this? So it's just a whole world of opportunity out there. So good luck if you are going to start your YouTube channel. And um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Hi to Rick Moranis. And until next time, he'll my kisses from my little bit of shoes. Bye, guys.